Hello again, this is Dr. James Camp from Lee College in Baytown, Texas, and this is my uh, commentary on Chapter 8 of Big C++ by Kay Horseman. This is Part 1 of Chapter 8 where we talk about uh, input and output with text files. Um, the C++ input-output library uh, uses a concept called streams. Okay, a stream is just a source of data and an or a destination for data. Um, the most common sources and destinations for data, other than the console I/O that we've been using so far in this class, are the files on your hard disk. So you need to know how to read and write disk files to work with large amounts of data. Um, that are common, um, you know, if you get hired as a programmer for a business, they're going to have files that they want you to read and read from and write to. Okay, this is a stream of characters. It also has some numbers. Um, we could type this stream continuously from the keyboard, but it's more likely that something this long would come from a file. Um, each letter or number or symbol um, is just one ASCII character, okay? Um, and every now and then there is a new line character at the end of a line. Um, notice that all of this text is very plain. There's no bold, there's no colors, there's no italics. Um, a text file is just what we call plain text. It's just a stream of ASCII characters. Um, there's no formatting, no colors, and most importantly, no images or video or music. Um, a C++ program can read these sorts of plain text streams of characters from the keyboard, as we've done so far with CN, um, but it's also very good at reading them from files on your hard drive. Okay, um, a brief aside about Unicode. Um, there are 127 characters that uh, are encoded by ASCII. That's not nearly enough to uh, cover all the languages in the world. So an, a new standard was come up with some years ago called Unicode. Um, each Unicode character is up to 21 bits. The first, uh, the first eight bits is identical to ASCII. Uh, or the first seven bits, the first 128 characters. Um, the next 1920 characters take two bytes, um, and this includes letters for most of the Western European languages, Spanish, French, German, Swedish, Greek, Cyrillic, um, and then some of the more exotic languages like Hebrew and Arabic. Then you get three byte characters for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Um, and there are even some four-byte characters that include historic alphabets like Egyptian hieroglyphics, um, mathematical symbols, and even emoji. You can see the high-speed train emoji at the top of this slide that they uh, stuck in as an example of um, um, something you can do in Unicode that you couldn't possibly do in ASCII. Uh, the system is designed so the most commonly used characters take up the smallest number of bytes unless you live in, say, China. Uh, you can tell by looking at the first byte how many bytes long the character will be, and so you can read, store, and display that character properly. By default, C++ code is encoded in ASCII, but C++ has the ability to store Unicode characters in string variables. So um, you could create a string with the Unicode for an, an E with an accent, or you could create a string with the Unicode for a high-speed train emoji. Um, and you can include those in longer strings of text. So you can read uh, Unicode files into C++ strings is the kind of point of this little aside. 
Okay. Now, I have uh, so far been talking about plain text files. Um, there are two kinds of files stored on your hard disk. Plain disk, plain text files are a series of characters. That's, you know, again, just text, no images, no bold or italics, none of that. Um, binary files are a series of binary bytes that encode data. Sometimes they encode characters, but sometimes they encode images or audio recordings. Um, this file that you're watching right now is a binary file. You're, you're streaming it as a binary stream. Um, you can read and write text files in pretty much the same way that we've been reading and writing console text throughout the class. Binary files is a touch more complicated, and we're going to get into those in a future lecture. Um, to read and write files in C++, you create variables in your programs that are objects of the file stream types. Okay, We've used objects C in and C out for console output. We can create new objects of type IF stream for input file stream, OF stream for output file stream, or just F stream if you're not sure if you want to do input or output or, or maybe you want to do both. Um, and you must pound include the F stream header to get these types. Um, before you can use a file, you need to open the file. Opening associates the variable name with the file name. After the file is open, you refer to it only by the stream variable name. You can forget the file name at that point. So, for example, um, we create an IF stream called infile, and then we call infile.open and pass it the, the file name input.text. Um, it's also possible, if you're only using one file with that, uh, particular uh, IF stream variable to pass the uh, pass the file name in the file declaration in the, the variable declaration. You can say IF stream in file parens input dot text. Um, note that. Um, when your program sends the OS a file name, the OS is going to try to open or create the file in the same directory as your program is executing. This is a common source of errors because you may not have the file in the same folder. Um, and in that case, you need to use uh, the full file path. So um, some examples of full file paths are shown here g colon backslash backslash homework backslash backslash input dot text would be a Windows USB drive. Note that I have to do two backslashes because backslash is the escape character in, in C++ strings. Um, if I want something from my home directory, I, I c colon double backslash users double backslash James Camp double backslash documents double backslash input dot text. So you need to know your computer's directory structure in order to actually find um, files unless you have the files in your program's directory. Um, Linux slash media my drive slash homework slash input dot text. Um, in Mac and Linux, you can get a home directory by putting tilde and then slash documents and then slash input.txt. Um, often you don't want to hard code the file name. You want to provide it from a string variable. Um, maybe you want to request a file name from the user stored in a string and then pass it to dot open. Um, or alternatively, you might want to build file names using an algorithm like uh, a project name plus a run number plus a timestamp. Um, I've done that for some of my research files. Um, the dot open function was originally built to use C string character arrays. Um, so older versions of C++ require you to call the dot C string method um, to pass that to open. Um, 
C++11 and later lets you use a C++ string object. So really you can ignore this if you're using any kind of modern compiler. Um, sometimes you're done with the file long before your program is ready to exit. And in this case, you should close your file stream with the dot close member function. Uh, when your program ends, all the streams that you've opened will be automatically closed, but sometimes you want to open the file briefly, use it, then close it, and then move on to another file. Um, closing one file allows you to then use the same input stream variable to open another file. Okay. That's a lot of background. How do we actually use this? Um, we can use the greater greater operator that we've been using um, with CN um, to read from an input file. So we have string name, double value, um, in file, greater greater name, greater greater value. So we just use the same input operator that we've been using with CN. Um, the trick here is that um, reads from a disk can fail, okay? Um, you can fail if the program, you know, if the file didn't open. You can fail if um, you reach the end of the file. Um, and as with CN, you can fail if you try to read a number and get a letter instead. Um, so it's a good idea to test for input failure before doing anything with the input. If not, in file dot fail or um, while in file greater greater name greater greater value, um, as long as that pattern is valid, you can keep processing the input. Um, that will. The nice thing about this is that will automatically fail when you reach the end of the file. So um, you don't have to keep checking for end of file in this uh, in the C++ system. OK. Um, the open method also has a not failed condition. So we can try if, you know, in file dot open, um, if in file dot fail, then we print error opening the file. Um, and the program returns a negative one error code, else we, uh, we go ahead and read the file. How about writing to a file? Um, you declare an OF stream variable, open the file for writing, um, check for failure condition, and then stream the data to the OF stream using the same output operator we've been using with C out, the less than less than operator. So we can see here we typed out file less than less than name, less than less than space character, less than less than value, you know, end line. Okay. Write code statements for the following. Take a moment and see if you can practice this on your own. Um, how do we define an input file stream variable named in? We have if stream in. If we want to associate the input file stream with a file named in.txt, we then say in.open quote in.txt. Um, what if we want to define a variable word and read the first word from the file? We have string word in greater greater word. Um, what if we want to declare an output file stream variable named out? Well, that's going to be of stream out. Use the output stream variable to create a new file named out.txt. Um, that's an important point is that when you open a file for output, the operating system will create that file and start writing to it. Write a line consisting of the word hello. We say out less than less than hello less than less than end line. Okay. Um, 
what is the effect of the following statements? Um, we infile.open and an empty string. So infile is set to fail because you can't have a file that doesn't have a name. Um, and um, reading from infile to word would have no effect because there is no open file. Um, what's wrong with the following function? Um, if stream in should have been read as, you know, declared as a reference parameter. Um, and um, here, this should have just been in, not cn. Okay. Now let's talk a little more about reading text input. Um, what really happens when you read a string? Um, any white space is skipped. That's tabs, new lines, and space characters. And the first character that's not white space is added to the string word. Okay, more characters are added until another white space character occurs or you reach the end of the file. Um, you can read a single character in, whether it's white space or not, using the get function, infile.get character. Um, the get method returns the not failed condition, so you can check um, while infile.get um, to read the entire file one character at a time. Um, one useful application for the get character um, is uh, that you can check whether character is a digit. Okay, um, If character is a digit, then we're ready to read a number. If not, then we want to skip past it. Um, There are some functions in the CC type header, C character type, um, that are handy for this look ahead thing. You can check if a number is a digit, if it's an alpha, if it's lowercase or uppercase, um, or if it's alphanumeric. You can also check if it's white space and decide to skip it. Um, the function getLine from the string library reads a whole line up to the next new line character into a C++ string. The new line is deleted and not saved into the string. That's an important point. Um, so if we had string line and if stream in file, we can call getLine in file comma line and read one line from the file at a time. The getLine function, like the others we've seen, returns the not failed condition. So to process a whole file line by line, you can say while getLine in file comma line and process one line of data at a time. Uh, so here's a data file from CIA.gov. Each line has a country name and a population. Uh, if we want to read this in, um, we have a problem that some country names have spaces, so we can't just write in file country name population. Uh, instead, we'll read the file line by line with get line, then we'll run through the line string to find where the name stops and the number starts. So to find the first digit of the population, we'll say while not is digit line at i, I++. Plus plus. So that will tick through not a digit, 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 etc., etc., etc. Okay, keep plus plusing until we find here that is a digit, so we exit the while loop and I, uh, I is 14. Okay, then we go backward to find the end of the country name. Um, 
we go while is space. So this time we say, okay, that is a space, so go back one. That's not a space, so j is 12. Then we can say country name is line dot substring from 0 to j plus 1. Okay, and string population is line dot substring starting at i and going to the end of the string. Um, how do we convert the number the uh, number to a the the number string to a integer? Um, we can use the number string function a to i, um, or we can use a trick in section 8.4 that we'll get to in the next lecture. Now imagine if our country population looked like this instead, United States 303A24646. We would need to call get line on each country line, but we might want to use greater greater to read each population line as an int. The problem is when get line follows a greater greater. The, the greater greater input operator skips any leading white space, but it stops reading at the next white space. So it leaves the new line character in the input stream. A get line that follows a greater greater will find that new line character and just stop reading and you'll get an empty string back. So what you need to do is have a dummy variable that you just throw away that gets the dangling uh, slash in uh, out of the way. You could also call in.get or in.ignore um, or you could use get line for every line of input and just convert the population lines using a to i. Okay, practice it on input. Take a moment and see if you can figure these out on your own. If we want to set str to the next line in the input, that's get line in comma str. If we want to set str to the next word in the input, that's in greater greater str. If we want to set character ch to the next character in the input, skipping any white space, we do in greater greater character. If we don't want to skip white space, we just want to get the next character, we call in dot get ch. Okay. Um, if we want to know if ch is a digit, we say if is digit ch. All right. Our third and final topic for this presentation is how to write text output. You use the operator less than less than to send strings and numbers to an output stream and the put function for a single character. Okay. So we create an out of stream out file. We out file dot open output dot text that creates the file output dot text and starts to write to it. Uh, and then we say out file less than less than name less than less than quote space quote you know one space character less than less than value less than less than end line or we can out file dot put ch and, and put an individual character on a line so what this will end up with is saying hello space two and then on a new line it will have the exclamation point character. Uh, to control how our output is formatted, we use stream manipulators. These are things we've seen before with set width, fixed, and set precision. There are some other ones that we're going to introduce here. Set fill um, sets the fill character that's used when you use set width. Okay. By default, it's a space, but you could put a zero in there and get hours in the zero, zero, colon, zero, zero format. 
um, you could put set fill dot and get a a leader line of dots between um, taxes and the tax rate 6.25. Also notice we have a uh, manipulator there left that left aligns the word Texas within its 10 space field and then right that right aligns the tax rate within its 10 space field. So our manipulators that we've learned about so far set width sets the field width of the next item only set fill sets the fill character for padding a field so you can put in extra zeros or dots or dashes or whatever you feel like um, left and right select left and right alignment within the uh, set width field size um, fixed selects a fixed format for floating point numbers um, and set precision sets the number of significant digits for floating points or the number of digits after the decimal point for fixed format. Okay. So how do we produce this output? Um, we would have stream set precision six fixed 12.34 um, space one two three four five six seven eight nine point zero. If we want a column width of ten, we would set the fill to be a dot and then set width to ten. And then print one, two, three, end line, set width 10, 4, 5, 6, 7. If we want count to be left aligned, then we would stream the left operator set width 10 for count, then the right operator and set width 11 for the 177. Okay, for money values, you want fixed format with two digits after the decimal point. To get the scientific format, you can use scientific, which will print things as 1.235E plus 02 um, scientific notation. To switch back to the default floating point format, you use the default float um, manipulator. All right, now I've got some file I.O. practice for you back on the uh, Blackboard site. Um, and then we've got a second part of this presentation that will talk about string streams and uh, binary files and some other interesting topics. Um, until then, good luck and happy programming.